Oh, well, hello everyone and welcome to our summer undergraduate research program information session. Um, so this session will be recorded. So we'll have the information session portion of the session recorded and the uh, Q&A portion at the end of the session will not be recorded. Um, so for introductions, I'll let Dr. Ted Brown introduce himself. Oh, okay. So thanks, Sabiga. So good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for um, joining us to find out more about the IMS SERP program. Of course, SERP stands for the Summer Undergraduate Research Program in IMS, and I am the director of the program. My name is Ted Brown. I'm um, a scientist at the Lunenfeld Tenbaum Research Institute. My area of research is ovarian cancer and reproductive endocrinology. Um, and I've been with IMS for, for a couple decades. Um, so you can see that I do have a top to my head. Um, uh, I do have hair up there. Um, and uh, it's a pleasure to, to be here with you this morning. And I'll let Sobiga introduce herself, and then we'll tell you a little bit about the program and, and address some of your questions. Yeah, so hi, hello, everyone. Um, so I work as a curriculum and education administrator here at IMS, and I've been in this role for almost three years now. And I'm also the Summer Undergraduate Research Program Coordinator. Uh, so in my role, I do anything from curriculum development to our course enrollment, our hiring, our teaching assistants, um, coordinating events like our scientific day, as well as coordinating our summer undergraduate research program. So today we'll be providing you with more information regarding our summer undergraduate research program, what you can expect um, during the program, the application process, and what you require for the application as well. Okay, so um, before I go into this slide, I, I, I think I probably should introduce you to the Institute of Medical Sciences. Um, which is the department in which this program um, exists. So the Institute of Medical Sciences, or IMS, was originally established actually in, back in 1968. And it serves as the graduate unit um, for the clinical departments within the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Toronto. So um, we have 11 clinical departments and uh, we have... A, a bit over 600 faculty in the Institute of Medical Sciences. So as you can imagine, these come from all 11 um, clinical departments. We also have members in basic science departments within the Faculty of Medicine. Um, and the research that is conducted at the IMS or by IMS faculty members encompasses the full range of research from basic biomedical science all the way to population and population health. So translational and clinical research, um, health systems and health services research, and population health and very basic sciences. So um, we hope to expose you to, uh, uh, to the various types of research within the IMS during the summer undergraduate research program. So what is SERP and what does it have to offer? So it's a 12 week program, um, officially starts at the beginning of June and goes into August. And during this 12 week program, we kick it off with an orientation. I think, uh, I think it's scheduled for June 2nd, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then we have weekly seminars. Uh, these will be both in person and some will also be offered through a Zoom platform. They are um, required. And during these seminars, you'll be exposed to various faculty and graduate students within the IMS. And through this, you can get a, a, a broad perspective of what IMS uh, the types of research that IMS is, uh, is conducting. Also, many of our speakers will tell you, um, many of them are clinician scientists, and they will tell you about their career trajectory, how they went from undergraduates 
to faculty members in doing some exciting research. Um, and the program culminates in our research day. And this is a very formal event. Um, we hold it at a part house. It's a, totally in person. And it's a full day event. And we'll talk a little bit more about this in a few minutes. So um, throughout the 12-week program, you'll you'd be working in uh, a research lab uh, with ongoing supervision. Uh, you'd be encouraged to participate in lab meetings and join in journal clubs that are happening. Um, our faculty are broadly dispersed in various uh, affiliated hospitals and in the CAMH as well. Um, so many of these institutions have journal clubs and we would encourage you to um, participate in those. So why, why, why should you be interested in a summer undergraduate research program? There are multiple reasons. First is to gain some research experience and improve your analytic and critical thinking. Um, so this is a very personal um, um, benefit. Uh, there's mentorship and network building opportunities. And this is very important for you as you're making uh, decisions about where you want to go next. And also through network building, you're able to develop relationships with faculty members who can write letters of recommendation for you. Um, we hope that you'll get exposed to a to diverse research topics and approaches through these seminars. And as I alluded to, that this will help you clarify your career plans. You may engage in research and decide it's not for you, which is an important discovery. But for most of you, and hopefully all of you, we would hope that you would catch the research bug and really enjoy yourself. Research can be a lot of fun. It can be very rewarding and uh, you can integrate it into many career um, career plans, careers and career plans. So um, can I have the next slide? Yeah, just before we move on to the next slide, I just wanted to clarify the orientation will be on June 4th, not June 2nd. June 4th, sorry. Thank you, Sabika. So our supervisors are located um, across many different sites. This is just a list of the hospital and research institutes um, where our faculty members have their labs. Uh, we do have some members on campus as well. So you can see they range across um, all of the university affiliated hospitals. Um, these are the 11 uh, clinical departments uh, that have members within um, the IMS. We also have members within Department of uh, Physiology, um, Laboratory Medicine and Pathobiology, and possibly some members through engineering actually as well. So you can see that it's, it's quite diverse. So a lot of opportunities. Okay, can I have the next slide? So our research day will be held in um, mid to late August. Uh, these are some images from, I believe, last year's um, research day. This is held. No, this is older because we're we're now using electronic posters, not the uh, not the poster boards. But it's a full day event, um, and it starts with a welcome. It starts at eight o'clock, eight thirty, with a welcome and 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 uh, breakfast. And then we have a keynote address uh, by one of our um, one of our faculty members, uh, and this is followed by questions, and then podium presentations where we select a number of uh, abstracts that you submit um, based on your research, and we ask that you present them to the entire group as an oral presentation. This is followed by lunch and opportunities for network and then poster presentations. And uh, we have breakout rooms and the poster presentations uh, are, are um, 
done using an electronic posters. So you'll have uh, your poster will be projected onto a onto a screen, and then you present to your a group of peers and faculty and graduate student uh, evaluators. So we do um, give awards out for best poster, best uh, oral presentations. And so we conclude with an award ceremony. So it's a great deal of fun. Um, uh, and it's, it's run very much like uh, a scientific meeting. So it gives you that experience. Um, so can I have the next slide? And I guess, so Biga will tell, talk to you about the application process and then we'll go through some um, common questions and answer those and then we'll open it up for more questions. Yeah, so for the application process, so if you go on our website currently, you will notice that on our website at ims.utoronto.c under the Summer Undergraduate Research Program section, um, there is a, a document where you can find a list of the supervisors who are recruiting summer students for SERP 2024. So this um, uh, document has information on their email address, has information on the project. Um, some of the project descriptions also tell you what sort of qualifications um, the supervisors are looking for. Um, so your first step is to look uh, through the list of uh, supervisors recruiting summer students for 2024 and select the uh, projects that you're most interested in. And then you want to email the supervisors that you're interested in working with for the summer. So when you're emailing supervisors, it's recommended that in your email, you keep your email brief, but you do provide information regarding why you're interested in this specific um, summer position, you attach your resume, uh, and uh, it's also good to attach your transcript as well. Um, provide reasons why you're interested in this specific position. Make sure you're customizing your email um, for each supervisor, and in your email address, you're uh, checking for spelling, um, you're addressing um, like, hi, doctor, uh, name. Uh, so just these are some of the things that you should do. Once you email the supervisors, they do get lots of emails. So then most of our supervisors do interview uh, potential summer students. Um, so if you do get selected uh, for an interview, uh, that will be the next process. Um, so all of this happens before February 27th, which is our application deadline. So once um, a supervisor um, once you found a supervisor uh, and they've selected you as their summer student, you will go on our website and you will see the domestic application form. So you will need to fill out this entire form. Uh, some of the sections are filled out by you and then some of them um, you'll complete jointly with your supervisor. So as part of the application form, you'll uh, sorry, as part of the application that you will need to submit to IMS by February 27th, you will need to complete the completed signed domestic application form. In addition to to that you will need to uh, email your official transcript so this is super important it can uh, it cannot be an unofficial transcript we don't accept um, any screenshots of academic history uh, so it must be your official transcript you can send electronic official transcripts so uh, we will accept electronic official transcripts that are sent directly to me by your uh, university or if you can email them uh, as part of your application as well that's fine as well as long as along with your resume as well. So your resume um, should highlight um, the awards that you've received through, from university onwards, whether they're um, academic awards, whether they're research awards, whether they're science awards, any publications, if you have any, any poster presentations that you may have given, um, as well as any research experience uh, you have had. And these are super important to highlight in your resume. It is only supposed to be two pages long, so please do not send a resume that's over two pages. So along with your um, application form, your resume, and your transcript, you need to send all of that to my email by February 27th, 2024. We will not be accepting any late applications this year. So this includes that, um, that I receive your official transcript by February 27th. Um, so once we receive your applications, our awards committee will be reviewing applications that have selected joint funding specifically. Um, so um, results of the joint funding competition, as well as for all students who've applied to the program, whether through external funding or full funding, will be um, 
they will receive your acceptance email or the results of your application in March 2024. Um, so as I uh, was mentioning earlier, there are three different funding options that you can select. You either have full funding from your supervisor, which means that your supervisor will be providing you the full $5,000 stipend for the summer. Um, the other option is external funding. So uh, you must receive a minimum of $5,000 through any external funding award, whether this NSERC um, or any other external funding awards. And this is up to you to apply for these external funding awards. And then joint funding is very competitive. Um, so not everyone who applies for joint funding will receive joint funding. So we do look at um, your GPA. So you need a minimum of a 3.7 CGPA, which is your cumulative GPA across all of your university years um, on a 4.0 scale or an 80% equivalent. For medical students, you must be in, uh, a you must provide a letter of good standing from your university registrar. So we look at GPA along with um, your resume and your full application uh, to qualify for joint funding. To uh, apply for our program, you need a minimum of 3.3 CGPA. And for apply for joint funding, you need a 3.7. Um, so these are uh, strict GPA requirements as well. Um, and then students, all students, as I was mentioning earlier, must receive a $5,000 stipend for the full 12 weeks in our program. So our program is June 1st to April, uh, sorry, June 1st to August 24th. But this year, because I believe June 1st falls on a Saturday, we'll be starting on June 3rd. Um, yeah, so I also have a list of frequently asked questions that I wanted to go over before I open up the floor um, to other questions. Uh, so I frequently get asked, I'm, I'm a Canadian citizen who's pursuing an undergraduate degree at a university outside of Canada. Am I eligible to apply as a domestic applicant? So if you're a Canadian citizen who has a valid SIN number um, and you are pursuing an undergraduate degree outside of Canada, whether that be the United States, whether that be the United Kingdom or anywhere else, um, you can apply as a domestic applicant to our program. You must be in Toronto uh, for the summer, however, because this is an in-person program. Next question I often get asked is, can I send a screenshot of my academic history instead of an official transcript? So no, you cannot send a screenshot of your academic history. We do need official transcripts. As I mentioned earlier, electronic transcripts are accepted. Um, or you can scan, um, if you have a paper copy of your transcript, you can scan uh, the paper version of your transcript as well, but it must be an official transcript. And another question uh, that I get or is, I will submit my application form and resume by the application deadline, but I can only send you my transcript after the application deadline. Will you consider my application? So unfortunately, we cannot consider your application. And this year, we also have a very um, small amount of time to go through a large number of applications. So all application materials must be received by February 27th. So please plan uh, well in advance. A lot of universities do have a uh, few days required for processing transcripts. So please um, take that into consideration when you're ordering transcripts and um, preparing your application. So this brings us to the end of our presentation portion of today's information session.